joke that goes around amongst the seasoned photographers states that when we put the exposure meter inside the camera and then coupled it up to the shutter speed and the aperture, then we lost the plot of photography. And that's the trouble with computerization technology in photography today. It makes us think that we no longer need to know these things, that my camera does it all for me. And indeed, this is something I learned myself when I ran photographic holidays, that they didn't know sometimes what a shutter speed was or indeed an aperture. But then, of course, to be fair to them, that is what they had come to learn. Unfortunately, I felt that by the time the holiday had finished and they went back home, then they returned to the automation of their state of the art camera. An aperture is the size of the iris inside the camera lens, and that size is variable, it can be larger or smaller. And a shutter speed is the length of time it remains open from a fraction of a second to perhaps many seconds. But you know, shutter speeds and apertures do far more than give you a correctly exposed image. And this is something we shall see later on. Now, when I had the stalwart photographer who insisted that their camera did everything for them, I didn't argue with them during the teaching session. But when we were out in the field, perhaps in a mountainous countryside where there was a waterfall, then I would invite them to take two pictures of the waterfall. In picture one, I wanted to see the water absolutely frozen, so I could see every single particle. In the other picture, I wanted to see the water blurred, but the surrounding bank still had to be sharp. And of course, if they didn't understand the traditional aspects of photography, then they couldn't do it. Somebody once said to me, my camera won't let me. They might succeed in getting the frozen water by using a, a preset, but the blurred water was a little bit more difficult. This was my first camera, an Agfa Select, which I had around about 1959. It's of course a film camera, but that doesn't make any difference. Now the shutter speeds and the apertures are engraved around the lens barrel and you had to set them manually. And in order to understand that, you had to expose for the conditions of the day, the intensity of light. And to help you do that, you might use something like this, a separate exposure meter. This, of course, is the device that later went into the camera for automatic control. And then we, of course, we forgot what apertures and shutter speeds, well, some of us anyway, forgot what it was all about. But, you know, this is 1959. I had just left school. I couldn't afford one of these. And instead, I used one of, do you remember these things? Where you dialed in the information according to the conditions and somehow, and I'm afraid I can't remember how to do it now, but somehow you got a fairly accurate exposure reading. But in doing it this way, you understood what photography was about. You understood the relevance, the meaning of apertures and shutter speeds and later on how they can help us in our creative photography to produce an image which perhaps is a little different. These are the basic shutter speeds that you would have found on a camera like this. And it's quite easy to see by the numbers that as you move up or down the scale, then the length of time that the shutter is going to remain open either doubles or halves. Nice and easy, isn't it? Now let's look at the apertures. 
not such a helpful set of numbers. Uh, there is a reason for this, but we needn't go into it. These are the basic apertures which you will find in all cameras, so a little bit more complicated these days in a computerized camera, but certainly in the Agfa Select, these were the basic apertures. And take it from me again, as you go up and down the scale, then the light, the intensity of light, the amount of light reaching the sensor either doubles or halves. And this is something we had to do manually, either with the exposure meter, which I showed you a moment ago, or this nifty little device here would again help you. And as I said before, in having to do, work out the exposure this way, you understand the traditional aspects of photography and indeed quite a lot more. When we present the information, the exposure for a particular picture, maybe from photographers like you, and even from today's latest camera, courtesy of the metadata, then it's shown by a combination of a shutter speed and an aperture. And here you have a table of several. And it doesn't take a mathematician to realize that the exposure values of all six or seven examples are exactly the same. So why do we need all these figures if the exposure is going to be the same? Well, of course, the variable, the variable aspect I haven't shown is the intensity of light that might be around at the time. Or if you go inside a church, for example, then the level of light is going to drop. Therefore, you would need a longer shutter speed or a larger aperture. Otherwise, the picture is going to be underexposed. Or if it's a lovely sunny day, we go outside again from the church, then we would need a shorter shutter speed or a smaller aperture. Otherwise, the picture is going to be overexposed. So now we're starting to be a little creative in our photography in order just to get the exposure right. But don't worry, of course, a computerized camera does it all for you, but it's essential, I think. It's important to know how it is done, because as I said a moment ago, aspects of shutter speeds and apertures can help us to be more creative in our photography. And so we now return to my waterfall example. To freeze the water, then I would take a little bit more control over the exposure, and you can do this with most cameras, and that is to choose a very short shutter speed, something like a thousandth of a second. Now, when you do that on shutter priority, and I'll talk more about this in a later program, then the camera is going to choose the right aperture for a correct exposure. Coming now to blurring the water, yes, you've guessed it, we have a longer shutter speed, and therefore the camera, again on shutter priority, will choose the appropriate aperture for a correct exposure. As for the long exposure, we are running into the realms of camera shake. Now, many cameras today have image stabilizers in the lens or the camera to help you, to assist you to take longer shutter speeds without camera shake. On the other hand, if you wish, you can resort to a tripod or a monopod to keep the camera steady. So there you have the basic values for exposure control, apertures and shutter speeds. Now, when you look into your own camera, your computerized camera, you look into the menu, you'll find that not only will you find these values, but a lot of others as well. This is something that was perhaps a little difficult to do with a camera like this. With a computerized camera, not only can we give the whole values, but half values and 
other values as well, which makes it a little complicated for me to explain what is going on with apertures and shutter speeds. That's why I stick, at least for the moment, to the whole value. So I hope that doesn't uh, confuse you too much. OK, I'll come clean now. I will admit it, that when I go out on a shoot, then I keep the camera on program. So yes, guess what? It's selecting the shutter speed and aperture automatically for me, which, dare I say, is encouraging you not to do, isn't it? Well, at least with me, in relying on program, when it becomes necessary, I do understand what is going on inside the camera in respect of apertures and shutter speeds, and also how those aspects of photography can help to give the creative touch to your work later on. And here I'm thinking of, for example, sports photography, quite a specialised uh, area, and also safaris where the animals are some distance away. So maybe I'll get towards that. Perhaps I should have a, a visit to Longley to, and take the animals there in due course or somewhere like that anyway. So stay tuned to my channel for number five for this beginner's guide to photography.